Luke chapter 1, from verse 26 to 38. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Can we imagine what it must have been like for Mary to hear the words of the angel Gabriel? This Jewish maiden was being asked to play a central role in God's plan of salvation. Through her, the Son of God would take on our human nature, so that through him the entire human race might be redeemed. By her ascent of obedience to and trust in God, Mary had the opportunity to reverse the act of disobedience against God by our first mother, Eve. What a momentous invitation. Along with Christmas, today is also a feast of the incarnation of the Son of God. We celebrate the fact that the Almighty Word of God, through whom and for whom all things came into being, entered into his creation so that he could save it from death. We also celebrate Mary's response to God. With unselfish abandonment, Mary agreed to cooperate fully with God's plan. Try to imagine Mary's innermost thoughts even as she pondered the angel's words to her. No matter what anyone thinks, no matter that I do not completely understand how this will be accomplished, no matter what the consequences be, yes. No matter how much I may have to suffer and what's the nature of that suffering, indeed, without reservation and unconditionally, yes, let it be done unto me according to your word. In her complete surrender to God, Mary stands as an example for us. Each of us has been chosen in Christ. In baptism, the Holy Spirit has come to us and filled us with unmerited love of Christ with the very life of God. God the Son has come to dwell in each one of us and he increases in us as we place our trust in him. Becoming a son or daughter of God, we are given the opportunity to make Christ visible to a world that desperately needs him. Even if we have been working at our spiritual life for a long time, we can find encouragement in today's feast to open ourselves anew to God's action. Asking Jesus to enter our hearts today, let us receive his healing and transformation so that we might bear him into the world. Now, imagine the faith necessary for Mary's reply as she freely submitted to what God was asking of her. Yes, she said, let it be to me according to your word. In Luke chapter 1 verse 38, trust, faith, hope, humility, obedience, and love all converged in these simple words, and the word was changed forever. It is this story from Luke that led St. Francis of Assisi, among many others, to call Mary the spouse of the Holy Spirit. But we shouldn't limit this image simply to the time of Jesus' conception. The Spirit overshadowed Mary, not only at that moment, but at every step of her earthly pilgrimage. Indeed, there is so much more to Mary's life of faith than this one moment in time. Throughout her life, she lived in humble submission to the Spirit. Throughout her life, she grew in dependence 
on the Spirit and became a greater witness to the new life Jesus had come to bring all of us. Like Mary, we too are called to say yes to God, not once, but again and again and again. Like her, we too have been invited into a close relationship with the Spirit, to be his dwelling place, to listen to him, to act under his guidance, and to bear Christ to the world. Like Mary, we may also ask, how can this be? St. Augustine once wrote, Christ's mother carried him in her womb. May we carry him in our hearts. The Virgin became pregnant with the incarnation of Christ. May our hearts become pregnant with faith in Christ. She brought forth the Savior. May our souls bring forth salvation and praise. Now imagine this scene. Angel Gabriel has come to Mary and announced the news that she has been chosen to conceive and bear the Son of God. From the moment of Mary's response, let it be to me according to your word, creation will never be the same. At this moment, Almighty God reveals the depth of his love as his Son humbles himself to become one of us. Saint Athanasius explained that while Jesus was always present with the human race through creation, now he entered the world in a new way, stooping to our level in his love and self-revealing. He was unable to bear that death should have the mastery. Rather than his creatures perishing and the work of his father for us coming to naught, he took to himself a body, a human body, even as our own. Jesus, friends, desired to take our humanity on himself so that by dying and rising bodily, he might give his life to us. He did it so that by sharing in every aspect of our humanity, he might show us how to live. As the merciful high priest destined to carry all our sins and temptations, Jesus lived a fully human life as we do. He too lived in this world, marred by sin. This is why he is capable of comforting us and equipping us to raise our hearts as he did to the Father. Have you lost a parent, a loved one, through death? Jesus endured the loss of Joseph, his foster father. Do you have difficulty working out certain relationships? Jesus had to learn how to love every kind of person. Are you hurt? when those close to you do not understand you. Jesus continued to honor his mother even when she found it hard to grasp his mission. In Luke chapter 2 from verse 48 to 51. Our Lord Jesus stands with us in every situation, giving us grace and strengthening us with his love. Let us then ask him, to be with us at every moment. Let us ask, uh, accept all of his blessings available to us through his humble sharing in our humanity. Let us pray. We love you, Jesus, our Savior. Your tenderness in sharing our humanity is beyond our ability to grasp. Thank you for taking part in our human life. Thank you for being with us in every situation. Amen. Thank you so much, my dear friend, for listening. 
please do remember to subscribe. God bless you.